sometimes when everybody else is headed in one direction or the other, there uh, steps forward one individual, maybe two that decide to do things just a little bit different. And uh, the next uh, speaker up, I think, has done a wonderful, wonderful job of representing this Senate district for many, many years. Uh, we've called upon him and he's called upon us and he's been there when we've needed him and he's been here when he wasn't even asked to be here, he came around. <laughs> but that's how our representatives should be. They should feel very welcome to show up at these events in our communities and sometimes simply mingle. Good medicine, we say that sometimes. The reason I said uh, sometimes someone needs to do something different is because uh, our senator, along with a senator from across that aisle, way, way over there, decided that they were gonna try to do something different and forge some middle ground. For that, he had his committee dissolved right, right from beneath him in an instant when he was trying to do something that hasn't been done since our new governor has been elected, and that is to forge a consensus, forge a middle ground that brings together the most diverse of constituents who want or don't want something. If you think there's anything glorifying in having thousands of people who voted for you, and each one of them has a different opinion about how you're supposed to do that, this is what sometimes our legislative leaders face. Everyone knows what the solution is, and it's their job to try to forge that middle ground. And I'm proud that we had a senator that was willing to lead, when it came time to lead 14 other people out of this state to slow things down. <laughs> Senator that's willing to reach over to the other side of the aisle and work together to make sure that this environment of northern Wisconsin and the concerns that are brought to the table are heard and implemented in law. They didn't have an opportunity to be heard as of yet because there were people that said, my way or the highway and it's not going to happen this way, and they shut them down, and now they're criticizing them for being anti jobs of all things. Can you imagine anybody who would want to be against jobs? Me neither, but I thought I'd give a chance for our state senator, Bob Jauk, to say a few words this evening as well. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, after Liz's announcement, I should just say ditto and let's go out to work for her because this district will be in great hands uh, with her representation. I'm so proud of her willingness to step forward. It is a difficult, it's a difficult endeavor to take that big leap and risk a very uh, volatile political climate and take stands for rightness and goodness and responsible government and good government. And it is uh, going to be a year, though, where we have a wealth of good candidates like Liz be, who stand for the truth, who know the truth, and whose purpose is to accomplish the truth and justice for every citizen. And the citizens of Wisconsin are on our side. So thank you, Liz, for your willingness to step forward. I, uh, uh, I, I must, our history goes back to 1983, in fact. Uh, Paul and I uh, began in state government. Uh, mine goes back to 1970, uh, but Paul and I, in 1983, he worked in the governor's office, and that was my first term. And <clears throat> we accomplished a great deal. It was really the beginning of the revitalization of the power of the Native American people of Wisconsin. And the Native American people of Wisconsin owe Tony Earle a great deal of credit, but they owe 
him a great deal of credit, too, for the leadership he provided back 30 years ago. It is interesting. It is no longer news about Indian country. It is news from Indian country. Yeah. And I, like all of you, I'm very grateful to Le Couture for allowing us to use this wonderful facility because 30 years ago, those opportunities did not exist. And therefore, the reach of higher educational opportunity was beyond the reach of the Native American community. And they struggled not only with impoverished conditions, but denial of the opportunity to improve themselves. And it is this facility and the leadership of those who are inspiring young people to go on beyond high school and get their college degree and become more of themselves and come back to the reservation and be mentors and leaders and inspire the next generation that will make the next generation the greatest generation as a result of the leadership of Paul and, and the rest uh, of the uh, leaders in this community. Can you imagine how, pride, how proud Pipe Mustache is today looking down upon this crowd? I noticed Dennis had to leave, but I am so grateful that he introduced his mother and father to us and reminded us of that story back when they weren't even citizens and they were told to go back to where they came from. Well, Dennis, we have gathered in the place from which your parents came, and it is right. And that is an important lesson for us to remember because in this incredible struggle, this journey that the Native American community has endured over hundreds of years, they have never lost sight of the sense of purpose of life and community and the value of the life that sustains them, the contributions of the land that sustains them. They've never lost sight of the need to show respect for each other. So many lessons can be learned, and you're absolutely right, Paul, about that wonderful speech that was given to, uh, uh, to, the, to the state of Wisconsin on the state of tribes. And it isn't remarkable that we have tribal leaders who stand in the place where the governor issues his state of the union as an equal, not as a subservient, not as servant, of the state government, but an equal to state government. And that is the ultimate respect for sovereignty and for the authority that the tribes should have in the state of Wisconsin. Rusty Barber, it's so wonderful to always hear you speak uh, and remind us that for years, for generations, the Native American community, even though they were not recognized as equals, if they were discriminated against, they were uh, uh, criticized uh, they were misunderstood. They proudly served our nation. And we thank you and the brothers and sisters of this tribe and all tribes who have done so much to serve our nation. I, uh, I represented Northern Wisconsin, proudly represented Northern Wisconsin uh, for almost 30 years. And must tell you that I am so honored as Janet Bewley is to represent a people whose character is more beautiful than the land we live in. Because it is the character of the people that define the greatness of the state of Wisconsin. In our DNA in northern Wisconsin, as Janet has talked about, and my good friend and colleague Kathleen Weinhout has passionately uh, shared about the values of people who live in rural Wisconsin, it is they care about each other. They care about their neighbors more than they care about themselves. They understand that the well-being of a community is important, is incumbent upon assuring that we do everything we have, can to help all succeed, not just ourselves. And so it is that you're gathered here today in this struggle to regain a government that has abandoned those principles and re-establish the identity of a state that has been stolen from us. Let me share you with you a quote, an exact words of a woman who testified at a public hearing in Janesville uh, about a year ago, well, it would be about nine months ago, uh, 10 months ago, uh, during the budget. 
She introduced herself. She said, I nor any member of my family is a member of a union. I am a freelance writer. My husband and I have two children, two sons, and we are very proud of the education they have received in the Janesville School District. I have never done this before in my life. I have voted, but I have never participated in a public hearing. I have never been involved in politics before in my life. I did not know how much I loved Wisconsin until Governor Walker introduced his proposals. In a word, I'm heartbroken. I will remain silent no longer. I will continue to strive as a human being to do everything in my power to return Wisconsin to the state we know and love. And that is why you are all here this evening. In this turbulent time in which our state has been ripped apart by ideology, extremism, this sense of private democracy in which the goal is to accumulate as much political power at the expense of the public voice is not the Wisconsin we know, we love, that has long been the standard bearer of good government across this land. But in this moment of turbulence, the public has found their voice. And across this state, there are hundreds of thousands of citizens who are like you. The, fa the face of Wisconsin is before us, and they are like you average citizens who are going to do everything in their power to reclaim the estate, not for the sake of their personal power, but with a sense of purpose that they want Wisconsin to once again be that state of shining glory that provides opportunity for every citizen, that provides educational opportunity for every child, that recognizes we have an obligation to provide health care and needs to the person who is struggling that we have a responsibility to the most vulnerable, that social and economic justice should be something that we strive for, not be frightened by, and that we are one people when we work together and we are weakened when we are divided, and that we will not accept an administration or Republican power that cares so little about the state of Wisconsin. We are going to do everything in our power to reclaim this state, and that's what this recall election is all about. to hear the gubernatorial candidates. And I'm just going to take a few minutes, a couple of minutes longer, if you don't mind. Because I want to remind you what Bob LaFollette said. He said, I would be remembered that <clears throat> as one who in the darkest hours kept a clear conscience and stood for the ideals of American democracy. That is an expression being shared by each and every one of you by your presence by your effort, by the 30,000 who circulated nomination papers, who are resolved to do what is good for this state because they love this state, and they weep in fear of what's happening to the state. And so across Wisconsin, citizens are carrying the same torch that each and every one of you are. And when we went to Illinois, and I must single out my colleague Kathleen Weinhout, that she was one of the more passionate, purposeful leaders during that time in Illinois where her family, her sister and brother-in-law, gave up their home to provide a place of refuge until we were discovered by the Tea Party people who lived across the street. <laughs> <laughs> we sure ruined their day, I'll tell you what. <laughs> um, but Kathleen, you're, you're going to soon, you're going to soon hear her passion and her love of Wisconsin and her sense of justice. Uh, she and I and our 12 colleagues, we left the state of Wisconsin because we did our job to give the people their voice back. And there is nothing more important in a democratic system to make sure that you, the people, have a voice in the democracy that is, is, it is ours, it isn't those who uh, wish to abuse it. 
and we were successful. I mean, even today, there are those who critique us for leaving the state of Wisconsin. But the fact of the matter is that there are more people engaged in this democratic process today than there were 15 months ago or two years ago. And that's good for democracy, not bad for democracy. Kathleen will say it, I'm sure, to the, uh, 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 that Bob, Bob LaFollette's quote that what you need is not less democracy, but more democracy. And we are proving that so well. A final point I want to make um, about the mining issue. Never will I apologize for attempting to pursue a good, responsible public policy that serves the public interest and works on a bipartisan basis to serve the public interest because that's the Wisconsin way, that's what Wisconsin people yearn for. And I'm proud to have worked with Senator Schultz, a Republican, to come up with a responsible bill that represents the best of Wisconsin. And it is interesting that there is a recall effort against Governor Walker and four Republican lawmakers because of their adamant refusal to compromise and that there is a group of extremists who are out of touch with mainstream politics in Wisconsin who want to recall Senator Schultz and me because we dared to work with each other to achieve a compromise that's good for the state of Wisconsin. I will not apologize for one second, nor will he, for doing the right thing for the people of Wisconsin. And I know that Janet, Janet meant this in her remarks. That certainly you will be in good hands with Liz, but we will not stop working with you. We will not stop being your voice. We will not stop striving to improve the quality of life in this community and the future for this young boy and the young man who was singing in the, in the, uh, in, 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 with, the, with the drum group. We are going to work together to strive for the betterment of this community because it is our responsibility. It is our obligation as adults and as leaders to make sure that we do what is right and good for the future. That's a legacy that Bob LaFollette left us. That's the legacy you are carrying forth, forth tonight. And that's the legacy that will be established over the next year and in the future that makes it good and better opportunities for the North and for Wisconsin. Thank you.